going on, Mech Warriors? Welcome to my first MWO informative video where I, RJ Base, am going to try to help you guys, the new players, in learning how to play this extremely complicated shooter game. Now, I have been playing Mech Warrior online since 2012, since it was in closed beta. A lot of the things that I do when people watch me on stream are just secondhand knowledge to me. And even though I've been playing this game for so long, there's still a lot about the game that I don't know because the game is just that intricate and that complicated. So if you are a brand new player and you don't know where to begin with this game, hopefully this new line of videos I'm going to be putting out every so often will help you along your way. And today's first video in this series, in this informative series, is all about the Mech Lab. In this video, I hope to be able to show you guys, the new players, how to use the Mech Lab and to configure mechs to the way that you want to use them in the game. And we're going to start, I'm going to start with this mech right here in front of me. This is the Centurion A. This was a special variant that we got from NCIX before they went bankrupt. They did something with the game and we put in a code and we got this mech. I want to start with a mech that's still in its stock loadout because that, that way it'll represent a mech that you would get brand new from the store. If you go and purchase a mech from the store, when you get it, it'll be in its stock configuration. And so I want to start with a mech that's in its stock configuration. And real quickly, I'll go over how you would purchase a mech. I'm not going to purchase one because I just actually purchased a mech the other day. I'm starting to get a little low on C-bills. Uh, so... I don't want to purchase another mech right now, but real quick, when you're in the home screen of of the mech lab, you want to purchase. If you built up your C bills, if you saved up all your C bills and you're ready to purchase your mech, you would just simply click on store. And on the left hand menu, they'll probably all be shrunk, or it might have something else up here. Probably yeah, you'll be in the store home originally when you first uh, go to the store. You go to the battle mechs and you find the mech that you want to purchase. You click the mech, add it to cart. And then up here on the right, you'll see you have your cart. You click on that. And from here you go to purchase cart. Now I have never, or I have never had to remove something from the cart. So I'm hoping that I can just get out of the store here and just go back to the mech lab which is what i'll do yeah i think my cart went away that's good okay so once you get the mech the mech is in your mech lab you then need to go to select mech and when you initially start playing the game the only thing that you're going to own are trial mechs these are all the trial mechs that are currently in the game you have access to play all of these mechs and their standard default loadouts some of these trial mechs are actually okay because the loadouts were created by the, the, the community. A lot of them are not so much fun. And you can actually take one of these mechs and you can configure it in the mech lab. If you click on it, you can go to loadout. It's going to tell you though, you can configure this a trial mech in the mech lab. The only thing is though is that you can't actually save it. It allows you to play around with the mech lab, but you can't actually save it. So we're just going to assume that you have saved up all of your C-bills and that you have purchased your first mech, whatever mech it may be. If you have not purchased your first mech and you're using my video as tutorial, simply just click on a mech, one of the trial mechs, and that way you can move along with us in the mech lab. But I'm going to go back to my mech. That I was gonna that I was gonna use that was the Centurion. I don't this Centurion NCIX version. This is a mech. I'm gonna go back to the home screen real quick. This is a mech that is currently in its stock configuration. So we're gonna we're gonna do the mech lab demonstration and how to use the mech lab with this mech right here. So your mech is selected. You purchased your mech. 
you selected the mech you're at the home screen or you're in the mech lab you selected it it's it's time to configure it so when i click on the mech lab tab and i have my mech selected it takes me to the loadout screen we have this menu on the left hand side over here loadout skills weapon groups camo spec cockpit and manage drop decks we are going to focus on the loadout weapons groups camo spec and cockpit skills if you take a look at this these are this this is the skill system here this is a whole nother beast completely on its own and we just don't have time in this one video to go over it so we're going to start with loadout we're going to set up a loadout on this mech the centurion and then we will look at weapons groups camo spec and cockpit we will also save man's drop decks for a faction warfare video which i will make at a later date now to do this properly i'm going to turn off my webcam so that we can see all of the screen and here we are looking at the default loadout for the centurion a now let's quickly go over all the different elements of the loadout screen we'll start off with seeing all the different components of the mech the way this loadout works it breaks down each section of the mech and what you can do with that section hard points are listed in each component of the mech for example the right arm of this mech has a single ballistic hard point denoted by the the bullet chain the the bullets there in purple i have zero ballistic hard points available because i currently have an ac10 already occupying that slot if the ac10 is removed by clicking on it i can double click on it or i can drag and drop it off of the mech you can see my ballistic hard point now goes up to one in the right torso i have an ams anti-missile system hardpoint there's no ams on the mech so if i wanted to put an ams on the mech i would in the weapons tree we'll get to that in a second i would go down to the ams section drag and drop the ams onto the mech we're going to go through all of that in the left torso i have two missiles missile hardpoints available and as you can see i've got one long range missile or lerm 10 already on the mech this, this means that I have two more missile hard points available. So if I take off the LERM, I now have three missile hard points available. The left arm has no, no weapon hard points, so I can't put anything there. The center torso clearly has two energy because it has two medium lasers in it, and the energy icon denoted by the yellow sunburst thingy there says zero. If I take off a medium laser, it now says I have one missile or energy hard point available. So what I like to do, well, before I continue on with that, before we continue building with the mech, let's go over the rest of the screen that we're seeing here. So aside from those components there, we also have the upgrade section over here. This is where you can change things like from armor to ferrofibrous armor to light ferrofibrous armor. You can also change the heat sinks from standard to double. And then you can change the structure from standard to endo steel and the missile guidance from standard to Artemis. And we'll go over what those things mean here in just a minute. Also on the mech, on the, in the mech lab loadout section, we have the warehouse. Starting at the top of the warehouse is where we can change the layout from the expanded view, which we are currently in, to the column view. This is extremely handy if you are on if you are gaming on a resolution of 1080p or smaller and larger resolutions you can you don't have really need to use the the column layout but the column layout if you're on 1080p or smaller is really handy because you can you can actually take your mech spin it around and as you're placing items onto your mech you can see exactly where they go so for example if you're playing with if you're trying to configure a mech that has hard energy or missile hard points or ballistic hard points that are up tall and you want to make sure that you get the right weapon in the tallest mount possible it's sometimes good to do it in the column layout so that you can make sure that the right weapon is going into the right spot 
For now, though, we're going to go back to the expanded loadout, loadout layout. Pardon me, and we're going to continue looking at the warehouse. In the warehouse, after once we go below the the layout, we have the sections for weapons, ammo, equipment, engines, and consumables. We're going to start over here with weapons, but before we start configuring the mech, we're going to we're going to go down from here and we're going to look at the mech stats screen down here. At the bottom, we have the mech stats screen which you can shrink and expand with that item in the corner. In here we have the strip mech. If you click this, it opens up the strip mech window and different things that you have equipped on the mech, you can strip from the mech. Since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and strip all of the equipment out of the mech right now. And now, as you can see, I have no more equipment on the mech. Going back to the mech stats screen, we also have reset mech. If you click the reset mech button, this will bring the mech back to the last saved configuration. If I click that, I'm now back to my standard loadout for the default version of this mech. Also in the mech stats, this is actually a very important window, by the way. You have your tonnage, your slots, because you can only put equipment on the mech if you have the slots available. Also, if you only have the tonnage available, your armor, how much armor you have on the mech versus how much you can actually have. Heat management, you're going to want to keep a close eye on that. Heat sinks, you also need to keep a close eye on this. Each mech is required to have a minimum of 10 heat sinks before it can go into battle. Heat sinks here are shown with two slash and in parentheses eight. This means that the engine has eight heat sinks built into it. So in order for this mech to go into battle, two external heat sinks must be added, which you can see here and here. This mech is legal for battle because it has 10 heat sinks. A mech also must have, must also have weapons on it. Weapons that can cause damage to another mech. It could be something as simple as a micro small laser or a flamer, but in order to go into battle, it must have offensive weapons on the mech. So this mech clearly qualifies. We got the 10 heat sinks. We're under tonnage. We have a 10 heat sinks and we're under tonnage and we have offensive weapons. So this mech can go into battle. Firepower here is listed how much damage you'll do in an alpha. In this case, this mech will do 30 alpha. Speed should be pretty obvious. This is how, mech, uh, how fast the mech will go forwards and backwards. This mech will currently do 64.8 kilometers per hour forwards and 43.2 kilometers per hour backwards. Jump distance. If your mech is capable of equipping jump jets, you will have uh, read out here that shows you how how far you can jump based off of the maximum it can jump and then your engine you also have indicators here for ams artemis and active probe if you were to put for example missile guidance over here if i click on that and go to artemis you can see artemis has now turned green these items turn green when that particular node is active on the mech We'll go back to the upgrades here in a second. Down here, a little bit further down, you can see the hard points. It tells you one ballistic. It shows you where it is, two energy, that they're in the center torso, three missile in the left torso, ECM it's not capable of, AMS it shows one in the right torso. When you hover your mouse over any one of the particular components, a little box pops up that gives you the basic information about that component. Scrolling down more. Underneath that, it's got the total weapons that are on the mech. In this case, an AC-10. It's got one, a medium laser, two. Consumables. We'll get to those in a minute. But if you have consumables on the mech, they will be listed here. Enhancements. If you haven't done anything to the skill tree, the enhancements list will list any enhancements that have been added by PGI to the mech to make it more playable in the game. For example, this mech has a ballistic cooldown of minus 10%, meaning that after you fire a ballistic weapon, the weapon will cool down and be ready to fire again 10% faster than a mech that does not have that quirk. Missile cooldown, 
base structure, the internal structure has been added to the CT plus eight plus or plus eight points. Um, has a lot of has a lot of structure quirks in this mech. You also have a base armor in the right arm of plus sixteen, which is really handy. That right arm gets that that armor because people know when they see a Centurion to shoot off the right arm because it's got that ballistic hard point. It's got some laser duration, ballistic velocity, etc. You also get a list of what you have in the cockpit. We will be getting to that in a little bit when we start messing with the cockpit section of the mech. And then you have your basic graphs. Tells you that with the performance of the mech, how far it can pitch its angle, its its yaw angle, acceleration, etc. It's all listed here. I don't look at this too much. I sometimes pull it up if, there, if I'm working on a particular style of mech. Mostly I keep mine shrunk and down here so I can see the basic stats of the mech. But all that information is there for you if you choose to use it and look at it. When, when a mech is new, I might pull it up so I can see what kind of enhancements it has before, before I start kitting it out. Then on the left hand side of the screen over here, you have how much money you are spending on the mech listed in C bills, the in-game currency you get by participating in matches and MC, the in-game currency you get when you actually purchase it with real money. Below that, you got your current battle mech and your current amount of premium time that you have in the game current amount of MC that you own, C bills that you own, and XP that you own. So let's get to configuring this mech. When I am dealing with a brand new mech that's in its standard configuration, if I have the C bills to start configuring it, the first thing I will do is I will strip it. So I click on strip mech in the mech stats, and here I'm gonna go to all equipment, click OK. Now I have a blank slate. Plain, clean mech with which to create my, my massive robot of destruction. Once I strip the mech, I then like to change the armor values. You see these numbers here, 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 and here, that is where you adjust the armor for your mech. The more points of armor you have in a particular component, the longer it will last when the enemies decide that you're the person that they need to kill. So, in this case here, I like to adjust my armor a certain way, but when I first start off with building a mech, I turn all the value, armor values all the way up. So I'm gonna take my legs, I'm gonna crank those all the way up. I'm gonna take my, my center torso has two armor values for the front and the rear. This is how much armor I would have in the front if people are shooting me in the front and how much I would have in the rear. Lots of new players like to stack the armor in the rear, but if you're playing the game right, the enemies aren't at your rear. So I like to turn my center rear armor down and apply as much armor to the front of the mech as I possibly can. I then do the same thing on the side torsos. And I turn up the front armor as much as possible. Depending on the skill levels of the player, some players will turn all of their rear armor down to a single one. One point of armor in all the rear. Some players do that. I know some players that do that. They are of a much higher skill level than me. I don't do that. So. I have all of my armor values at max. So this is where I try to figure out what I want to do with this mech that I have in front of me. Well, let's go to the warehouse. <clears throat> with this mech, I'm gonna start with putting what kind of weapons configuration I think I would like on it. And I think with this mech, I want to create a short range brawler. So I'm gonna start in the right arm. The right arm has one ballistic hard point. So in the warehouse, I click on ballistics and I can see here a list of all the ballistic items that I can put in this mech. If it has this no smoking like symbol next to it, that means that the mech, that, that weapon won't fit in that component for one particular reason 
or another. In this case, it's a matter of slots. You can see slots right there. This AC20 requires 10 slots. We count the slots in the arm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can't put it in there because we only have nine slots. So if I want to put a powerful weapon in here, I have to figure out which one will work best. They had an AC-10 in there, so we'll probably put the AC-10 back in the arm. Now, ballistic weapons and missile weapons, they require, they require ammo. I typically like to put three tons of ammo, depending on the weapon. The larger ballistic weapons, I will put three tons of ammo. AC-5, AC-2, Ultra AC-2, Ultra AC-5s, machine guns, etc. I won't put as much ammo because ammo, at one ton of ammo, as you can see here, over here, one ton of ammo can hold so many shots. For example, the AC-10 that I put on there. If I click on it, it'll show me that it takes up, oh, this is, sorry, I have to go to ammo. I'm on the wrong tab. I need to be on the ammo tab. Here's the ammo. If I click on the AC-10 ammo, you can see that it takes one slot, weighs one ton, and has 20 shots. It has a health of 10. So this is where you need to decide how many shots do you want to have with that particular ballistic weapon. Typically, I will do three tons of ammo per large ballistic item, but if weight restrictions come into play, I might only use two and a half tons, like I have here, because ammo comes in full tons and half tons. As you notice, by putting the AC-10 on the mech and the ammo on the mech, to, put, to take an item and put it on your mech, it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping. Drag it on the mech and put it where you want. In this case, we're going to stick with the two and a half tons of AC-10 ammo, and we're going to move on to the next component. I'm building a short-range brawler, so I'm going to look at my missile hard points over here. I think this, this mech would be good with some SRMs, short-range missiles. If I go back to the weapons tab, I can shrink ballistic, shrink energy, and I can look at the missiles. I can see here, I got SRM-2s, SRM-4s, and SRM-6s. Now I can start putting SRM-6s on here. Six, that means there would be six missiles that shoot out for each weapon. But now we're running into a problem. Tonnage. I only have 7.9 tons available to continue outfitting this mech. This is where I need to start figuring out what I'm going to do because I also, oh, I put streaks on there. That's a problem. I don't want streaks. I'm going to put standard SRMs. Let's put those back on there. Okay, so now I've got uh, 10.9 tons and I have to get ammo on for the missile hard points. For SRMs, I typically only do one ton of ammo per, per weapon. So I'm going to take this ammo and put it on the mech there. That's three more tons. So now I am down to 7.9 tons of space and I still have to get an engine on this thing. Remember, each mech, that's another thing that you have to have on a mech before you can take it into battle, is an engine. You have to have an engine, you have to have offensive weapons, and you have to have at least 10 heat sinks. Because I don't have an engine, I currently have, as you can see from my mech stats, zero heat sinks. So this is where I would go to look at the engine tab in the warehouse. <clears throat> and from here, I get to choose what kind of engine I want. This is an inner sphere mech. There are two main types of mechs in the game, inner sphere and clan. Depending on which type of mech you're gonna use, you have different technology available. Inner sphere has standard engines, XL engines, and light engines. Clans just have standard engines and XL engines. In this case, I want to put a light engine on here. So I'm gonna look at the heaviest light engine I can. So if I take this light engine 180 and I put it on the mech, 
I now have an engine. I'm at 49.6 tons out of 50, but I can't take it into battle. Look up here, my flashing red triangle. And this thing right here, if I click on the flashing red triangle, it says you require three more heat sinks. Because if we look down here at the mech stats, we can see the engine only has seven heat sinks in it. So I would need to figure out a way to adjust the mech to get three more heat sinks on it. Since I don't have anything in this arm, I need to clear up just a little over two and a half tons. So I need to start adjusting the armor down. So I'm going to take this armor all the way down. I still need another almost ton and a half. So then I have to start adjusting armor in other places. I'm going to take a little bit out of the head. I'm going to take each leg down to 40. Okay. So now I can get two heat sinks on there. That's not going to do it. I go to my equipment tab. We'll just get the two heat sinks and we'll put them on there anyways. In the equipment tab here, you can see we have a section for sensors and miscellaneous, which in this case includes case and standard heat sinks. If your mech was, a, was able to be equipped with jump jets, you would have a section here for jump jets. So I'm gonna take these two heat sinks and I'm gonna put them on the mech. Obviously, I'm still only at nine nine heat sinks out of the 10 I need. So I would have to decrease the engine size. So I go back to the engines. Oh wait, actually, I'm gonna put that back on there. Nope, that wasn't the right one. I had the 180 on there. Okay, 49.9 tons. I can take the engine off and put other engines on over here or I always forget about this because I don't use it that much. In this drop down box below the engine, I can click on this, I can click on this drop down box. I can choose a standard engine, a light engine, or an XL engine. We'll go over the differences between those engines here in just a second. And then I can turn this down get a, to get a lighter engine in it. That one didn't help me. So now I go to the light 170. Light 170. A little bit smaller than the light 180, but it'll allow me to get, if I go back to the equipment tab, another standard heat sink on here. Now I'm at 49 tons out of five. It means I have an extra ton free. So I can do any number of things here. I can put on another ton of ammo for the AC-10 or the SRMs. I can turn up the armor in this arm since in the Centurion, it's actually a shield arm. I can turn up the armor on the legs a little bit so I don't get legged in battle. And there we have a mech that's ready to go into battle. Short range, ready to go. But I don't like it. I don't like it because I'm only going to do 55.1 kph. Without any skills added to the mech, that's going to leave this mech very vulnerable. So what do I do to fix that? Well, I can take off these SRM-6s, go back to weapons, go to missiles, and I can put on SRM-4s. That puts me at 47 out of 50 tons. So now I can increase the engine. Back I'm up to a 175, puts me at 49 tons. And a 180 puts me at 49 tons. 185 puts me at 49 and a half. 190, 49 and a half. 195. All those, all those engines are the same size, huh? I didn't realize that. 195 is the largest I can go to. Puts me at 49 and a half tons. So if I wanted to take up that extra half ton, I could put it in the legs. or I could have switched out that half ton of AC-10 ammo for a full ton, but by doing that, I can increase my armor. So now the mech is looking a little bit better. I'm doing 63.2 kph, and I still have decent firepower. I'm at 35, not great, but it's decent. 
So now I have to figure out what else can I do to this mech to make it so that I can put maybe a bigger engine or get those SRM sixes back on. That's where we look at upgrades. In the upgrades section, we have armor. In armor for an inner sphere mech, you have the choice of standard armor, which we currently have on the mech, ferrofibrous or light ferrofibrous. By selecting one of these, we, start, we increase the amount of slots that we use in the mech, but we also decrease its, its tonnage. The ferrofibrous armor weighs less than standard armor, so by selecting that, you can increase the amount of tonnage space, the amount of tonnage you have available while decreasing the amount of crit slot space. So now I can go back down here to the engine. If I try to go up to a 200, it's still too heavy. So I have to make another change. That could be in the structure. If I select the structure and I go and change it from standard to endo steel, look at that. We cleared up all kinds of space but that red triangle is back. If I click on that, it says mech currently has one or more slot violations. That's because your mech only has so many slots. By putting both the ferro and the endo on there, we've overshot the amount of slots we can use. So what if I kept the endo steel on and went back to standard armor? There we go. The red triangle is gone. We're at 47.5 tons out of 50. So if I wanted here now, I could look at increasing the engine. We're at 200, 205. We've gone up to a 205. We're now doing 66.4 kph. Not fast, not really slow either. So there must be something else we can do there. There is. We can change the type of engine. Notice as I'm doing all of this, my C bills are going up. Maybe because I don't own this engine. If I decrease this engine back down, my C, yep, look at that. That light engine 200, I have one of those. These engines cost money, so you have to be careful when selecting these engines and these weapons that you don't over, overdo what you have available in C bills. But going back to those engines, this light engine, it's called a light engine, a light fusion engine, because it's lighter than a standard engine. It uses up crit spaces in the center torso and also in the left and right torso. Two, it uses two crit slots in both the left and right torso. <clears throat> With a light engine, if you lose a torso and it, you lose a section of your engine, you can still survive. You can survive with the center torso part and the, and the other torso part. You will lose some speed, your mech won't go as fast, but you will still be alive. If we were to change that engine out, if I get rid of that engine, I go back to the engine tab, and I say a standard engine. I click on, my, on the standard engines here, I can take the biggest standard engine I've got, and put on the mech. I'm not gonna go as fast, because it's smaller than that, than that light 200 I had in there, but by doing that, by using a regular standard engine, I free up four crit spaces. Plus, if I lose a torso, it doesn't affect the engine at all. I won't lose any speed. So since maybe, maybe since I cleared up <clears throat> those torso spaces, maybe then I can change the armor back to ferro. Look at that. I can now bump up the engine. Go to a 200. 205 is too heavy, so we're at a 200. We're back up to 64.8 kph. Again, still not very fast. Not as fast as you want a good medium to be. So what can we do? Well, it's a little bit more dangerous, but there's one other option we can do. I'm gonna bump the armor back to standard so we have the crit spaces. I'm gonna get rid of the standard engine. I'm gonna shrink the standard engines and we're gonna look at XL engines. XL engines. Look at that. We can take we can get an XL235, put that in the mech. Puts us at an even 50 tons. We're now taking up three crit slots in each side torso. 
that that engine on its own comes with nine heat sinks. We've got three extra put in here. We could actually get rid of two heat sinks. Puts us at 48 tons. We could increase the engine even more. We're at 245. 250. We have an XL 250 engine in this thing. We're now doing 81 kph forwards, 53.9 backwards. Our heat management is fine at 1.26, same as it was before. But there is one thing you have to be very wary of here, and that is the XL engines occupying three crit slots in each side torso. These things can cause your mech to die a lot faster because if you lose a side torso, you're dead. XL engines, unlike unlike clan XL engines and light fusion engines, they can't take losing a side torso. If you lose just one of these components, one of these three components, you're dead. More skilled pilots will typically run XL engines because they will twist off the damage. They know how to play the game and poke and such, but as new players, as new players, you typically only want to put XL engines in light mechs. You don't have to. You can build your mech any way you want to. Just a word of advice. Until you get really used to the game and used to how to play the game, keep the XLs in your light mechs. The Intersphere XLs. Clan XL engines, they can lose a side torso. Light fusion engines in the Intersphere, they can lose a side torso. Intersphere XL engines cannot lose a side torso, making your mech that much easier to kill. So, where does that leave us? Well, I'm going to leave the Clan XL 250 in there. I'm going to keep it in there for now. I'm going to keep my three SRM 4s and I'm going to keep my AC 10. Heat management's at 1.26. I like to be at 1.3 or higher. So, what can I do there? That's where the heat sinks in the upgrades comes in. I've got standard heat sinks in there now. They take up one slot, weigh one ton. If I switch these to double heat sinks, it removes all the heat sinks off the mech. It charges me a fortune because double heat, switching from standard double heat sinks is expensive. But then I go to the equipment section. I put that double heat sink back on there. Look at my heat management is now 1.61. Double heat sinks take three crit slots. Inner sphere double heat sinks take three crit slots. Weigh the same as a standard heat sink, but also dissipate heat much better. So now my heat management's gone from 1.28 to 1.61. It's going to cost me some money, but my heat management's going to be a lot easier to manage than it was before. Moving on in the warehouse, that covers the engines. Oh, uh, I didn't cover targeting computers and Beagle Active Probe. Uh, let's, let's look at that real quick. And Case. Case, case is an is a item that you can put in your mech that, where you store ammo. You can do that to keep, it encases the entire component in this, this shielding that won't allow an ammo explosion to spread to the rest of the mech. So in this case, if I wanted to put my ammo in my torso, because I wanted the space for something else, I could put, I could, if I had the crit space and the tonnage available, I could put case in there. And then by putting the case in there, if I had an ammo explosion in my left torso, it would keep it confined to that. I would, my center torso, head, and right torso wouldn't be affected. Double heat sinks recovered. Beagle Active Probe, this is an item that you can put on your mech to counter ECM. Uh, it will increase your range. It will increase uh, the targeting time. It's kind of like a targeting computer in a, in a sense. It doesn't do quite as much. If targeting computers, they will increase your zoom level. Uh, they increase your sensor range, targeting time, beam range projectile speed, and critical chance. And the bigger your target computer, the more tonnage it takes, the more crit slots it takes, but the more it does, the percentages go up from there. You can add these things to a mech at any time. In fact, if I was wanted two tons of ammo, I could take out an am a ton of ammo and I could put a target computer in. I could put it in the head, I can put it torso, center torso, arm, wherever. 
I'm not going to put that in there, though. I'm going to keep that, that ton of ammo there. All right. So that covers the rest of the equipment section. We covered the engine section. Let's look at consumables. Consumables. These are items that cost either C-bills or MC that you can put on your mech and activate when you are in battle. Cool shot. If I take a cool shot and I put it on my mech, when I'm in battle, if I press the right, the right key in the keyboard, depending on how you have yours configured, I think it's page up for this one. So let's say my mech is really, really hot. I'm near shutdown. I can activate the cool, the cool shot and it will dissipate the heat in my mech, I don't know, about like 30% or something. So you'll, you'll go from near 100% heat to 70 or 60% heat. Depend, depends, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember the exact value numbers here. Let's click on it. Adds 18 heat per second per one second cooling to your mech's cooling efficiency consumed on use. So if this is an item that you want to keep in your mech, Check the box here for auto refill, and after a match, it will automatically refill it at the cost at the cost that it is. In this case, forty thousand C bills. You can also put on an airstrike when activated in the game. It'll launch an airstrike on the enemy wherever you place it. Artillery strike, same thing as an airstrike, just a different pattern for how it lays out the uh, the strike. Advanced zoom, I'm not not advanced zoom. I'm sorry, advanced UAV launches a UAV that detects all the enemy mechs. With every new mech, you get one empty consumable slot. The rest of them have to be unlocked in the skill tree, which again, another video for another time. So in this case, I'm gonna put on an airstrike. I'm gonna set it to auto refill, and let's go back and take a look at the mech. So let's say this is the loadout that I want. I don't know if this is honestly the exact loadout that I would put on this Mac, but for the purposes of this video, let's say that this is the loadout I want. I would then click save. I'm not going to save it right now, but I would then click save and my mech would be ready to go into battle. What I'm gonna do now though, so that we can move on to the weapons groups, camo spec and cockpit, I'm gonna click reset mech. We're back to the original loadout that it came with. This way I don't spend any of my valuable C-bills on a mech that I may or may not even play. But we go back to the original loadout so that this way we can now look at weapons groups. In weapons groups, this is where you can configure how you want the different weapons to shoot. And this one's actually set up pretty decently for the weapons that are in it. it has the AC-10 on one, medium lasers on two, LERMs on three. Let's say though that I want medium lasers on weapons group one. You just, you just click on the numbers to change which weapons group you want it on. If, it's the, if the number is lit, it's gonna be activated for that weapons group. And if it's not lit, it won't be activated for that weapons group. Once you have the weapons groups assigned that you want, you click save. Doesn't cost anything to save a weapons group. So now let's go to camo spec. Camo spec is where you can purchase with MC, the different camo patterns, colors, and decals that you want on your mech. In this case, usually when you first load in, it'll be on all or actually new. It takes you the second to load. This is typically what you'll see when you first go to the camo specs. It takes it a second to load. Takes a long second to load, apparently. There it is. Oh, I'm on decals. We want to be on patterns. Sorry. Patterns. I kind of screwed up there, but that's all right. We're going to start with patterns and we'll work our way across. So, patterns here are all the patterns that you can purchase for your mech. If you own the pattern, you'll see that it won't be locked. You can also just click on owned and you can see which patterns that you currently have for, for the mech. Patterns cost MC, like I was saying, 750 all the way up to 1500 for some of the special faction ones at the bottom. If there's a pattern that you want and you want to put it on your mech, just click the pattern. It'll tell you how much it's going to cost. And then down here in your total, you'll see how much MC it's going to cost. I don't want to spend any MC on the mech, but 
so we're going to choose a pattern that I already own. Once you have your pattern selected, you then go to color. You see all the colors that you own. Colors also cost MC if you don't already own them. We're going to put colors on here that I own. In this case, it's the PC Gamer. We're using the PC Gamer, which is red, white, and black. So we'll actually stick with those colors. Stick with colors I own. I'm going to start. I'm going to put the, the Karita Pure Red. Let's do standard red. Karita Red. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I don't want that there. I want that up there. It's red, white, and black. So we got red. We'll go to white and black. And there we have the PC Gamer pattern. Not sure that I really like it, but there it is all the same. Then we can put decals on the mech. Just like everything else, decals cost money. This, these new ones are 180 a piece. Uh, if you own one, it'll be unlocked. Once you buy a decal, it's unlocked for every mech. Whereas patterns can only be unlocked for the chassis that you unlock them for. Colors are unlocked for every mech that you own. And decals are also unlocked for every mech that you own once you make the purchase. So let's say I want to put... Let's go to the ones that I own. And let's go to a lot of these. You can only do so many configurations with, but not all of them. Uh, we're going to look at all of the, the decals that I own. And let's say we want, oh, this angry face. And we're going to put the angry face right here. Doesn't fit very well, does it? I clicked on, I clicked on the decal that I wanted. Now, if I, if I click and drag the mech, I can turn the mech around. I can take the decal and try to find, as is, as big as it is, I can try to find a spot where it'll fit. It looks like it'll fit right there. Probably get it back here somewhere. I can do that, or if there's a very particular spot that I want it, say I want it on this knob thingy that sticks out right here. I put the decal over it, and I use the scroll wheel on the mouse, and it's not, wow, it made me go really small for that. There's a, little, there's a few quirks with this feature. What if I, instead I put it up here on the fin? Let's see if I can make it bigger. Yep, I can do it like that, but I don't like the angle of it because the mech is kind of angled down a little bit. So on my keyboard, I'm gonna, I could use the A and D key to rotate it. So if I wanted to make it upside down, I could. I want to angle it with with the fin. I'll put that there. I double click to place them to place the decal. And now the decal. And because of the way it works, and it's such a thin piece, you can see it actually comes through the other side, which is kind of like a two for two for, for one. I, you know, two for one deal. I like it. So once you have your your decal placed, you can put colors on it. You click on edit colors here. And you can make it be whatever color you want. If you want it to be a big red angry face or you want to totally contrast with the mech with the other colors, you can do that. Now let's say you pick a different, we'll go back to edit decals here. Some of these decals you can't change the color for, like uh, these, these bullets right here. Oops, no, let's go back. Go back to that. I forgot I have to select the slot that I want to put it in. Let's say we go back to the slot one. Say I want to put some bullets on this mech, and I want to make them, say, wrap around. You kind of see there's bullet holes on this, the shield arm already. Let's say, I, let's say I want to put some bullets on there. Click that. I can drag them here. I can make them bigger. From right there, or if I make them smaller, I can kind of maybe, maybe I can make them stick out with the hand here. But regardless, or if, yeah, I can make them bigger like that so they go across the whole arm or if I want them to stick up like that probably make them that's as big as they'll go right there I could put them right there but since these are already colored if I click on edit colors it says not available because you can't edit those colors so I got the bullets I got the frowny face I'm done with my coloring and decals for now but let's move on to the cockpit 
and the cockpit is where you can add in the various items that you can view in your cockpit and over here we have we have standing hanging and mounted and as you can see if I pull up all of the cockpit items they do cost MC unless you already own them now unlike colors and decals when you purchase a cockpit item it stays in the mech that you put it in unless you take it out and put it into another mech let's say uh, I'm gonna click on my own because I don't want to spend any MC I'm gonna click on my own cockpit items I'm gonna pick one like this Atlas statue I've got, I own this Atlas statue so I click on that it goes into the standing cockpit item if I don't want it on the mech anymore Take that off and I pick another standing item. Some of these standing items have videos, previews. If I click that, put it on there, you can see the clapping serrat is clapping the whole time. Uh, I can put the classy mech on. And this one here has an animation feature. I have to click preview to see it. And it's like a bobblehead. So I put that on there. Then I go to hanging items. I find a hanging item that I want. So I can scroll down my list and we will add in duct tape. Sure. There's a preview on that. It's basically just showing how it wobbles when you walk. So then we go to the mounted items and we can pick uh, a war horn to put on or like there's certain items like I have this clan banner here that we got with the first clan wave back in 2014 or 2015, whenever that was. Can't get that one in game anymore, I don't think. But it doesn't do anything. Most people like their war horns, so I can click on this cauldron war horn, put it on there. If I click preview, I get a preview of the war horn. Black radio war horn, preview. Yeah, I think that one needs to be a little bit louder. But that's all right. Doesn't matter. We'll keep it on there. So. Now I have my three cockpit items. If I want to see the other ones again, I click on preview. It moves over to it. There's my little bobblehead. There's my duct tape, because if you can't duck it, fuck it, right? And then my war horn. There we go. Cockpit is done. That's camo spec. That's cockpit. That's weapon groups. That's loadout. You save your mech. Go back home so you can view your creation and your mech is ready to go into battle. Like I said, we will cover the skill tree in another separate video just for the skill tree. Uh, manage drop decks you can get to from all the screens. We'll cover that when we're going over faction warfare. I believe that covers everything. If you have any questions or if you see something I missed, please let me know in the comments. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing your thoughts on it. And as always, Mech Warriors, have a great one. Peace.